So in the previous lecture, we saw that there was something fishy at play here, where sometimes we can do pole placement and sometimes we cannot. And um, what we really have here is, it's a question of the B matrix. Is the B matrix rich enough so that we can make the system do whatever we want it to do? And remember that the B matrix really describes the actuators we have. So if we're cheap and we don't buy any actuators, meaning there's nothing we can do, of course we cannot affect the system. So the choice of B matrix, meaning what actuators we buy, will matter. And whether or not we have enough control authority revolves around the concept of controllability. And that is the topic of this lecture. And in order to sneak up on controllability, I'm going to start with a rather modest example. Let's do a discrete time system. We've seen mainly continuous time systems, but let's start with a discrete time system here, starting at time zero at the origin at zero. So what I would like to do is take this system, and in n steps, where n is the dimension of, of my state, I want to drive it to a target state x star. So basically, here's what I want to do. I want to start at the origin, and then in n steps, flow around until I get to where I would like to be. And the question one can ask then is, can I do that? Is it possible? Does there exist such a U? Well, let's figure it out. Uh, the first thing I do is I pick U at time zero, and X1 is AX0 plus BU0. Well, X0 was equal to zero, so this whole thing is simply equal to B times U0. Well, x2, that's a times x1 plus b times u1. Well, x1 is b u0, right? So the whole thing becomes a b u0 plus b u1. x3, well, if I plug things in, I get a squared b u0 plus a b u1 plus b u2. In fact, if I keep going to xn, I get uh, a n minus 1, b u0, blah, 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 right? So we seem to have a um, formula, really, for, uh, for where we end up. And in fact, what we want to do, of course, is make xn equal to this desired point. And what I can do is I can rewrite this thing, this equation, which is really an equation in the use in the following form. I have u n minus 1 times b. Well, that's this term. And then all the way down to u naught b a n minus 1 which is this term right here. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying, this is what I would like to solve with respect to my use. Well, when can I do that? Well, first of all, this matrix here, the B, A, B, all the way to A, N minus 1, B. It's a fancy looking matrix. And in fact, it's an important looking matrix. I'm going to call this matrix gamma. And gamma is an N by M times N matrix, where N is the dimension of the state, and M is the dimension of the input. Well, this solution, or sorry, this equation, X star is gamma times this U vector, has a solution in terms of the U's, if and only if the rank of gamma is equal to N. And rank is the number of linearly independent rows or columns in gamma. Well, so that's what we want to do. Right? We want to somehow have a gamma that's rich enough. And it turns out that this thing generalizes. This way of thinking about the control problem generalizes quite nicely to continuous time systems as well. So if I have a continuous time system, x dot is ax plus bu, x in rn. Well, first of all, this system is completely controllable, which we're going to call cc if it is possible to go from any initial state to any final state. So meaning, if I start here, and I want to end up here, there is a U that takes me between these two points, for any such points. That's what it means for the system to be completely controllable. And now, I'm going to define gamma again, which is this B, A, B, all the way to A, N minus 1, B. This is known as the controllability matrix. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the first theorem of this entire course. Controllability theorem, or complete controllability theorem one. The system is completely controllable if and only if the rank 
which means the number of linearly independent columns of gamma or rows is the same, uh, if and only if the rank of gamma is equal to n, where n is the dimension of the system. So this is the rank test, as it's known, and it's a way of checking controllability of a linear time invariant system. So let's see what happens. Here I have two different systems. 2011x plus 11u is the first one, and 01001. Fine. There should be an x here, by the way. Uh, so the lower one is the point mass. The upper one was one where we actually saw that pole placement was not possible. In fact, pole placement is possible for the lower system and not possible for the upper system. This is, in fact, the system we used when we couldn't do it. Well, let's look at them. First of all, this top system is a two-dimensional system, n is equal to 2, and gamma in this case is b, a, b, all the way to a, n minus 1, b, but n minus 1 is equal to 1, so gamma is simply b times a, b. Well, the lower system also is two-dimensional. Gamma is equal to b uh, times a, b. Well, let's compute AB then. It turns out to be equal to 2, 2 for the upper system. And if I plug this into gamma, I get B here and AB here. So this is 1, 1, the first column, and 2, 2, the second column. And if I multiply the first column by 2, I get the second column. So this thing does not have two linearly independent columns. In fact, it has one linearly independent column. So the rank of gamma is equal to 1 which means it's not completely controllable. Well, looking at the lower system, well, this is AB. This is my gamma, 0, 1, 1, 0. There is no way I can multiply this column by anything to get this column. So the lower gamma has rank equal to 2 because that's two linearly independent columns. So it is completely controllable. So here, pole placement, not possible, not completely controllable here. Pole placement possible, not completely controllable. It seems like we're ready for theorem number two. So if I have u is negative kx, x dot then become a minus b kx, this is the closed loop dynamics, then controllability theorem number two says that pole placement to arbitrary eigenvalues is possible if and only if the system is completely controllable. So what this tells me is that we need to check controllability. If we don't have complete controllability, chances are we're not going to be able to control it. So this is the obstruction to pole placement. And in fact, uh, let's, uh, let's see how we would actually compute something like this uh, for real. So let's say that I have, again, my point mass system. Well, in MATLAB, luckily for us, we don't have to compute things at all. We just say, here is the controllability matrix. So gamma, or G, is controllability of AB. We can check the rank. In this case, we get the answer out 2. So the rank of G is 2. N is 2 in this case. So we have, indeed, a completely controllable system, which means, again, I forgot an X here. I apologize. Which means that we can place the poles wherever we want. And we all, it also means that it's possible to go between any two points. So let's say that I start here, and I want to go to X star. Is it possible to go like this? Well, I know it's possible to go from x0 to x star, but it turns out that just because you can go between any two points doesn't mean you can follow any trajectory, because this system, the point mass, well, x1 here is position, right? And x2 is velocity. Well, if I'm here, that means I have a positive velocity and a positive position. And now, what I'm going to do, if I start moving like this, I'm going backwards, meaning x1 is reduced, with a positive velocity. And there's no way I can go backwards with a positive velocity. So this is not possible. So what do we need to do? Well, here I have a positive velocity, so I'm going to keep growing, but I can reduce the velocity. And here I have zero velocity, right, down here. And then negative velocity, I start going backwards, and da, 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 da. I'm going backwards, and then I can start going forward again to get to x star. So this is how you would have to go from x0 to x star. So you can't follow arbitrary trajectories just because the system is completely controllable. But you know that you can go between arbitrary points. So that gives us 
the tools that we really need to understand when we can control the system. And that tool is controllability.